Bada-bada 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 For dinner, we are having twice baked potatoes. I'm using both sweet potatoes and regular potatoes because I couldn't choose. I don't want to be made to choose. And I'm going to stuff them with um, feta and gruyere and spring onion um, and some yogurt to kind of lighten it all up. Oh, nice. And then I'm going to like stuff it back in. Yeah, double Ooh, cheese, double, double cheese. cheese. Double, double and then I'm going to put it back in the oven so it gets all like oozy and bubbly. And then we're going to make a za'atar pesto. Yeah, and then we're gonna kind of like put that all over. And uh, maybe some crispy onions on top. I think that will be nice. And, uh, and and what are you making as a side? Because I left the side to you. You know the broccoli that we have in the shops that everybody loves? The Adelangi broccoli. Yes, the infamous so I thought that would make broccoli. this today. It's the best broccoli dish. You can't, mm -hmm. You can't mess it up. Yep, totally. So, this is my broccoli. I blanched them for a minute and a half. Ta-da! So you want it like, not raw, but also you still want that crunch there, right? Yes, because you're going to grill them again, so there's more heat going on, you don't want to go mushy. So, my grill is going, and we're just gonna do the simplest thing. Ooh, listen to the sound. I love grilling. It just gives it that like smoky flavor, the right? Charred flavor. So Those beautiful. grill marks. Okay, what if someone didn't want to grill their broccoli, like? I would go roasting as well. Oh yeah, you could roasting roast it. Roasting is good. High heat, high heat oven. High heat oven, very, very high heat. Oh, it colors really quickly. Oh, it's nicely. A little bit earlier, <laughs> I fried some chilies. Ta-da! <laughs> and then we save the oil. And we have some garlic chips and some garlic oil. So you this. wait, you fry it in olive oil and you yeah. save the oil that you fry it in. So yes. that's why it gets really nice and red. Mm -hmm. And this tastes like garlic and that tastes like chili. This, oh, chili oil. <laughs> yeah. Chili oil is good. This I feel like you crab. have a whole chili. Do you have a chili oil jar in your kitchen? I do. So Chaya have... is the spiciest member of the test kitchen. Mine and too. she does like lots of chili in I everything. Do, do. A bit too much. <laughs> I'm All learning right. to tone it down though. Yeah. Nobody, you should never have to tone yourself down, Shia, for anyone. Just to chili, just to chili. <laughs> so, this broccoli yep. goes in this bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put some salt on. I'm gonna move it around so it gets salt everywhere. Some pepper. Always pepper. And some chili oil. You can yeah. add as much or as little, oh, that's enough. I was talking to you. <laughs> I need to. I need to rein it in. <laughs> then, but the garlic oil, you just go liberal with it. Go liberal with the garlic mm. oil. But lots oh, of oil. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the great thing about this as well is that you can make it ahead of time mm -hmm. and keep it on the side and it, it doesn't go bad or like, because there's nothing that wilts really here. No. Um, so should we just keep kind I'll of... Keep to the side yeah, and, and then, then we'll, we'll play it later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, look at that. They're all like Let crispy and golden and oozy and wonderful. So I'm just going to turn my oven up now to 220 degrees. Um, it's because we're going to put it back in to get all like bubbly and, and brown and great. So you want to let them cool down a little bit. Um, and then you just want to make a slit down the center. Um, Try to keep it in, as intact as possible. All right, so meanwhile, we're gonna get all the filling stuff ready, right? Okay. So, Chaya's gonna crumble some feta in there, and I'm going to just cut up some spring onion. What about this cheese? Yeah, we can grate it right into there. So we're using Gruyere, but if you could also use like just mature cheddar or Lancashire cheese. Oh, nice. Anything like, like oozy and melty. All right, so while this is toasting, I'm also gonna add my other spices. I'm gonna do a bit of chili flakes. Do you think that's enough? Okay, I'll do a bit more. <laughs> chili you, flakes. Thank you, thank <laughs> um, you. And some dried oregano, oregano. Do you say oregano? I say oregano. About two teaspoons. Uh, otherwise, you can add dried thyme or what fresh herbs if you wanted to add fresh herbs. Oh, fresh oregano, oregano. Um, 
And then some garlic as well. What do you think? A couple yes. cloves crushed garlic, in there. Garlic. It's great crushing technique. <laughs> this is my favorite garlic crusher of all time. Feel this from you. I'm also gonna go in with a bit of yogurt here. The yogurt adds like a bit of creaminess to the base, which we want. You could also use like sour cream or some double cream. And I'm gonna just drizzle in about a tablespoon of olive oil. And we already have cheese, so it's already got some salt there, but it still needs a bit more. Uh, and I'm also gonna just crack some pepper in. Um, and then I'm going to just, um, Crush my cumin seeds, which are nice and toasted now. All right, so that's all there. So what I'm gonna do now, this is nice and cool, it's not gonna burn my hands, is I'm just gonna kind of like spoon as much of it out as I can and try to keep the, the potato skin like intact. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix it all together and I'm just gonna use the back of my spoon to kind of like smush it. All right, so now it's the stuffing. Ooh, stuff it. So, did you want to get as much of the filling in as you possibly can? So it's very can. compact. All right, and then you just want to drizzle the top of a bit more oil. All right. And then we're gonna stick it in the oven for about 20 minutes till it's all kind of like brown and like oozy and melty and delicious. Try to guess what time it is. It's shelf reflection time. <laughs> All right, so um, some questions from the Instagram world. Yes, what did it say? How do you pair flavors? It's That's... all about balancing out like, what you feel, mm. like eating and balancing out the flavors. It's also experience. Know? Like you just mm. know that certain flavors go really well together. Um, and then you just like throw in a, a wild card sometimes to like ramp it up. What ingredients? Do the OTK members hate cooking with? Oh, I know. You know? Okay, you go first. Okay. I don't like cooking with pork and beef. Okay, and why is that? Is that because of growing up in Mauritius and? Yeah, because when I when I was growing up, because I'm um, I come from a Hindu Mauritian Hindu family, so yeah. we didn't eat beef or pork, so I can't digest it, and it tastes really weird to me. What do you mean? Like, so if you eat, it beef, feels heavy. You feel like it's just sitting in your stomach or something. Yeah. You, it feels heavy. All right. Well, for me, yeah. it's sunflower oil because <laughs> I know it means that we're deep frying, and that that means that I have to wash my hair and my clothes, <laughs> and I'm gonna smell like deep fried. Yes. I do shower regularly. I just, I'm just no, saying, no, she's like, saying she's saying she's gonna shower. That, like, if I'm just yeah. washing. Potatoes are almost ready, so I'm gonna make the zata pesto. I'm gonna put some garlic in the food processor, and then I've got some pine nuts, which I toasted. Obviously, if you don't have pine nuts, you can use like toasted almonds, blanched almonds, that would be nice. Um, and then I'm gonna go in there with zata, about three tablespoons. Uh, we, ta we talked about zata um, before, but you know, make sure you get zatel from like a Middle Eastern store. It should smell like super like earthy and I mean, I grew up with zatel, but I still can't get enough of like smelling it all the time. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with some coriander, uh, which I'm just gonna roughly chop. Put coriander on everything. You really do put coriander on everything. I've had to restrict you as well. No coriander, there's lots of restrictions at the moment. Ty has a lot of restrictions at the moment. <laughs> so I put the coriander in there and now I'm just gonna go with a little pinch of uh, salt. Zata can be a bit salty, so you don't wanna add too much. You can always add more later. Um, and then I'm also going to add a bit of olive oil. So Chaya, do you want to segment the this lemon, lemon for okay. us? So the best way is just to use a small sharp knife, right? Mm -hmm. And then kind of do exactly as Chaya is doing. Top and tail it, and then kind of use your knife to go along the curves of the lemon to remove the pith. You just slide your knife right between the membranes. Try to get out the little meaty bits. Juices are. So you want all the juice, yeah. as much juice as possible. Yeah. I'll transfer my pesto into this bowl here, and then you just want to add the rest of the oil, kind of loosen the pesto. It's such a delicious thing. 
So this is the Zaatar pesto and actually if you check out our Food 52 uh, episode next week, you'll see a different way in which we use it. Oh yeah. Ooh, these look very, very good. So they're all nice and colored and the cheese is all melty. Come on to a plate. They look very beautiful. They do, don't they? All right, then I'm gonna get my zaatar pesto and just kind of pour it all over the top. So I'm just gonna kind of put that on top. And then some of these crispy onions Ooh, all over. Crispy garlic flakes on top. And here's the crispy chili. Mm. What lovely British weather we're having. It is. It's so summery. <laughs> Chai, did you do this? <laughs> when it lights. It's so beautiful. I don't think I've had this broccoli since we were working in the shops. Oh, look at that. It's like a... Magic. Oh, yeah. I love this broccoli. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this broccoli. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can find the, all the links to the recipes and everything else you need in the description below.